The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Mark's Worship here in Strathkinnis on this, the third Sunday of Advent, on this special occasion when, uh, as well as some lessons and carols, we also have the ordination and admission of new elders. So we welcome them also. Um, the service will run as in the print when it comes to the ordination and admission section after the reading there I will offer a short address we begin by singing together our advent candle lighting song Christmas Let us pray. Creator God, from of old, people have gathered to worship you, made the time and the space to praise you, and in some sense we follow in their footsteps, for we too bow, bow down to worship you today, but in our time on earth. When the time was right, you sent prophets to speak your words to the people a vision given of a future when the Messiah would come. For their words and faithfulness, we thank you. When the time was right, you sent an angel to a young girl, asking her to become a mother, and in a dream to a man, Joseph, who would stand by her and be with her. For their courage and faith, we give you thanks. When the time was right, you sent the Baptist into the desert to prepare the way of the Lord to baptize Jesus. For his life and action, we give you thanks. Then profoundly and generously, when the time was right, you sent Emmanuel, God with us, for the ministry and teaching of Jesus Christ, for his life, death, and resurrection, enabling us to appreciate the depth of your love for us in a new way, we offer you thanks, deep thanks. And so as we listen to your word today, as we sing to you familiar hymns, may our minds and hearts be touched afresh by your message. May we experience your presence, your peace, your love for us. Amen. We sing together hymn 304, O Little Town of Bethlehem, hymn 304.
The reading is chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. was sent by God to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, with a message for a girl betrothed to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The girl's name was Mary. The angel went in and said to her, Greetings, most favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by what he said and wondered what this greeting could mean. The angel, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for God has been gracious to you. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will be king over Israel forever. His reign shall never end. How can this be? said Mary. I am still a virgin. And so the Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will you. For that reason, the Holy Child to be born will be called Son of God. Moreover, your kinswoman Elizabeth has herself conceived a son in her old age. And she who is reputed barren is now in her sixth month, for God's promises can never fail. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it be as you have said. Then the angel left. Let us pray. creator of light and darkness, we so often chase shadows and fail to walk in the light. Forgive us, O God. We travel through Advent as forgiven people, lifting our faces towards the light. Let us walk together in faith and in hope. Heavenly Father, you exalted the humble and meek. Give us humble and contrite hearts. Lord Jesus, you grew towards birth in the virgin's womb. Be planted also in our hearts and lives. Holy Spirit, you overshadowed Mary that she might become the God-bearer. Fill us with your heavenly gifts. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We sing him 313C in yonder manger low.
The second reading is verse 16. In those days, a decree was issued by the Emperor Augustus for a sentence taken throughout the Roman world. This was the first registration of its kind. It took place when Irenaeus was governor of Syria. Everyone made his way to his own town to be registered. Joseph went up to Judea from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to register in the city of David called Bethlehem. Of David by descent, and with him went Mary, his betrothed, who was expecting her child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her baby, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now, in this same district, there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch through the night over their flock. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, news of great joy for the whole nation. Today there has been born to you in the city of David a deliverer, the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. All at once, there was with the angel a great company of the heavenly host singing praise to God. Glory to God in highest heaven and on earth, peace to all in whom he delights. After the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Let us pray. Holy Jesus, to deliver us from the power of darkness, you humbled yourself to be born among us and were laid in a manger. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts and bring us at last to the joyful vision of your beauty. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour, and our eternal God. Amen. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Jesus was born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of Herod. After his birth, astrologers from the east arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is this newborn king of the Jews? We observed the risings of his star and we have come to pay him homage. King Herod was, great, Herod was greatly perturbed when he heard this and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together the chief priests and scribes of the Jews and asked them where the Messiah was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler to be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the astrologers to meet him secretly and ascertained from them the exact time when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go myself and pay him homage. 
After hearing what the king had to, had to say, they set out, and there before them was the star they had seen rising, and it went ahead of them until it stopped above the place where the child lay. They were overjoyed at the sight of it. And entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother and bowed low in homage to him. They opened their treasure chests and presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's pray. You guided those ancient ones by a star. When we look at our world today, clear guidance leading the powerful to the right place to take the right decisions for all would be welcomed by so many. Hear us as we in silence lift to you people in need today the ill, the bereaved, the lonely, the hungry, the cold, those who will receive presents through the toy drive appeal, those who use storehouse, those who will receive goodie bags, all who come into our minds now. May this season of Advent leading to Christmas shed your light, joy, and peace. And may we be part of that blessing. Accept, we pray, our offerings of money, and may the church use it wisely in your service. And hear us too as we sum up all our prayers in the words Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm sorry, but there seemed to be a wee bit of interference today. I've been sitting in different seats to see if my positioning might take away the interference, but it's um, not maybe helping. Um, we sing hymn 305, and then we move towards the ordination and admission of new elders. Hymn 305, In the Bleak Midwinter.
Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 to 26. The next day, Moses took his seat to settle disputes among the people, and he was surrounded from morning till evening. At the sight of all that he was doing for the people, Jethro asked, what is this that you're doing for the people? Why do you sit alone with all of them standing around you from morning till evening? The people come to me to seek God's guidance, Moses answered. Whenever there is a dispute among them, they come to me and I decide between one party and the other. I make known the statutes and laws of God. His father-in-law said to him, this is not the best way to do it. You will only wear yourself out and wear out the people who are here. The task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. Take my advice and God be with you. It is for you to be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him, to instruct them in the statutes and laws and teach them how they must behave and what they must do. But you should search for capable, God-fearing men among all the people, honest and incorruptible men, and appoint them over the people as officers over units of a thousand, of a hundred, of fifty, or of ten. They can act as judges for the people at all times. Difficult cases they should refer to you, but decide simple cases themselves. In this way, your burden will be lightened, as they will be sharing it with you. If you do this, then God will direct you and you will be able to go on. And moreover, this whole people will arrive at its destination in harmony. Moses heeded his father-in-law and did all he had suggested. He chose capable men from all Israel and appointed them leaders of the people, officers over units of a thousand, of a hundred, of fifty, or of ten. They sat as a permanent court, bringing the difficult cases to Moses, but deciding simple cases themselves. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today is a special day, the ordination and admission of new elders. A good Kirk session is something that is a blessing for everyone minister and unordained members of the congregation alike. I know that much thought and consideration and reflection goes into the decision taken by people when asked whether they would accept either ordination to the eldership or if they're already ordained admittance to the Kirk session within St. Mark's Church. It is right that that is so. For being an elder is a vitally important part of the Presbyterian government of the Church of Scotland. Elders are crucially important in sharing the tasks of leadership within a church community. How ancient a tradition it is we have seen from that reading that Margaret has just read from Exodus. Now of course and for many decades we have been ordaining women and men as elders. Moses is advised to appoint elders to share the burdens of leadership so as not to wear himself out and so that the whole people will arrive at its destination in harmony. The other point I'd like to emphasize today is that each and every single one of us have particular gifts and talents and skills which means each person has God-given gifts to use and develop in their discipleship in life and in church matters. 
For some, this may mean being given a specific office. For many, that is not the case, but everyone's gifts are crucial for the benefit of the body of Christ. But for some of us, specific tasks as well, for those ordained to the ministry of word and sacrament, reading and telling the gospel story, preaching the good news and sharing with people the gifts of God, baptism and holy communion. For elders, particular responsibility for caring for God's people, the tasks of oversight and leadership, tending to the spiritual well-being of the congregation. It's good too to remember that we are a parish church and have a responsibility to everyone within the bounds of the parish, part of St Andrews and the village here and areas surrounding Strathkinnis, indeed the parish, for those of you that don't know, stretches uh, all the way to this side of the bridge in Gard Bridge. Ministers will come and go. Some will stay longer than others for whatever reason. But through all the comings and goings of ministers arriving and departing, the Kirk session continues on, evolving all the while as people are lost through old age or death or moving away or exceptionally for other reasons. And as people join its ranks through ordination and admittance, the whole is able to move forward as one. In Kirk Session, one minister to many elders. In Presbytery, always more elders than ministers. In General Assembly, an equal number of each. In all courts of the church, ministers are never in the majority. It's a form of church government agreeable to the word of God and which, under God, even though it may not reach decisions as quickly as in some other denominations, when they are reached, they're considered and have the thoughts and wisdom of many behind them. Taking time allows for collective wisdom to emerge. So it is with important decisions in the Church of Scotland. Not one person or one court has sufficient authority to make the Kirk change its mind. Today, we may focus on the ordination and admittance of new elders, but it is only with all of us working together that the Church is what it is and can, day by day, become more like God wants it to be. We are all part of it and all needed to be part of it. For without us, it is not what it could be. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In 1 Corinthians, we read, there are different gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through different people in different ways, but it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all. Each one is given a gift by the Spirit to use it for the common good. We have the joy of using our gifts as members of the Church of Christ, which is his body, continuing his ministry in the world today. Those who are chosen for the office of eldership have the particular responsibility of caring for God's people and exercising oversight and leadership. Today, the Kirk session is met to ordain Jen Dewhurst, Michael Dewhurst, Patricia Hampton, Lorna Hutchin, and Dorothea Morrison to the office of the eldership 
and to admit them together with Stuart Kerr as elders in this congregation. Due notice has been given, no objection has been made, and we therefore proceed. If those joining the Kirk session, if you'd like to come forward, please, and stand in a line. You probably could sit down just now, in fact. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, who being ascended on high, has given gifts for the building up of the body of Christ, we are met to ordain to the office of the eldership and admit to that office in this congregation, Jen Dewhurst, Michael Dewhurst, Patricia Hampton, Lorna Hutchin, Dorothea Morrison, and to admit to the office of the eldership in this congregation, Stuart Kerr. In this act, the Church of Scotland, as part of the Holy, Catholic, or Universal Church, worshipping one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms anew its belief in the gospel of the sovereign grace and love of God, wherein through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, incarnate, crucified, and risen, he freely offers to all, upon repentance and faith, the forgiveness of sins, renewal by the Holy Spirit and eternal life and calls them to labor in the fellowship of faith for the advancement of the kingdom of God throughout the world. The Church of Scotland acknowledges the word of God contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the supreme rule of faith and life. The Church of Scotland holds as its subordinate standard the Westminster Confession of Faith, recognizing liberty of opinion on such points of doctrine as do not enter into the substance of the faith, and claiming the right, in dependence on the promised guidance of the Holy Spirit, to formulate, interpret, or modify its subordinate standards, always in agreement with the Word of God and the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith contained in the Confession of which agreement the church itself shall be sole judge. Would you please stand? In view of this declaration, you are now required to answer this question. Do you believe the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith? Do you promise to seek the peace and unity of this church to uphold its doctrine, worship, government, discipline, and to take your due part in the administration of its affairs. The Lord bless you and enable you faithfully to keep this promise. If you'd all like to come up, please, and sign the formula. The formula says, I believe the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith contained in the confession of faith of this church. I acknowledge the Presbyterian government of this church to be agreeable to the word of God and promise that I will submit thereto and concur therewith. I promise to observe the order of worship and the administration of all public ordinances as the same are or may be allowed in this church.
let us pray. Loving God, you have chosen for yourself a church in which your Holy Spirit inspires men and women to serve your purposes of love. We give you thanks that by your grace you have called Jen, Michael, Patricia, Lorna, Stuart and Dorothea to lead and care for your people as elders in your church. We commend them to you now as we ordain and admit them to the office of the eldership within the church of your dear son. Grant them the gift of your Holy Spirit that their hearts may be set on fire with love for you and for those committed to their care. Make them pure in heart as those who have the mind of Christ. Give them vision to discern your purpose for the church and for the world you love. Keep them faithful to the end in all their service, that when the chief shepherd appears, they may receive glory, a crown that never fades. Blessed be God for all his goodness and blessed be his son, Jesus Christ, and blessed be his Holy Spirit, endowing the church with the fullness of grace and making her words the word of life, her bread the bread of heaven, her shepherding of the flock of God, his own shepherd work. And to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, I declare you to have been ordained to the office of the eldership, and I admit you to office as elders in this congregation and parish. As a sign of our welcome, we give you the right hand of fellowship. Myself and Flora and Kenneth, the session clerks, uh, will do this. For those ordained, I have ordination certificates, and, uh, and there's a book that the Church of Scotland's produced about eldership, uh, so it's the book's one per household. But <laughs> the ordination certificate is for everyone who's ordained, and, uh, and Stuart, you don't get a certificate, but you get a book. Yeah, sorry about that. There we are. I think you could go and return to your to your seats. We move to the renewal of commitment that's in the order of service sheet. You will see that, uh, please uh, answer as requested, whether it's to all or to the congregations or to uh, the elders, including the new elders. Christ calls us all to share in his ministry. Let us then dedicate ourselves anew to his service. Please stand. Members and elders of this congregation, putting your whole trust in Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord, do you commit yourselves to love and serve his church and kingdom? As members of this congregation, will you encourage and support your elders, surround them with your love, and remember them in your prayers? the elders in your service as elders will you promise to carry out all your duties faithfully and cheerfully God being your helper 
Please be seated. Before our last hymn, uh, can I refer to the notices, please? A copy of which is not inside my order of service sheet. I borrow somebody's. That's great. Thanks, Callum. So it's great to have new elders in the Kirk session. There's tea and coffee in the church hall after worship. Please do uh, come and share with us in that. It's a chance to welcome these new members to the Kirk session. Next Sunday, worship will take place as normal in St. Mark's in the town. And then in the afternoon at 3 o'clock, there will be the annual Advent remembrance service for those who've suffered loss of any kind please do if you feel that would be a comfort to you come along it lasts about half an hour or if you know of anyone who might uh, find benefit from that please let them know about the time and the date I should say too uh, next Sunday morning uh, is the Messy Church Nativity Service and Vashti Room, who's been a church secretary for so many years, is finishing at the end of the month and we'll say thank you to her after worship next Sunday morning and then there will also be tea and coffee and mince pies after worship next Sunday. So a chance to say thank you to Vashti too. So that. Uh, I would like to just highlight that for next week, next Sunday morning. With Vashti finishing, we've been sort of moving towards how things will look going forward. Going forward, the office, and it's already only now open Mondays to Thursdays from 9 to 12 noon, which means you need to get notices in that bit earlier than before by nine o'clock on the Thursday morning. Uh, we've put there the times to when the office will be closed over the Christmas period. It will close on Tuesday the 20th December and will reopen on Wednesday the 4th of January. With the other congregations in St Andrews, we're hoping to start soup bowl, a simple weekly soup lunch, probably uh, on a Friday and the hope is that will start in January. And the hope is that we could get some volunteers who might be willing to help with that. There's a sheet at the back this morning out in the vestibule. Please do, if you're interested in helping as a volunteer, put your name down on the sheet and more details will follow soon. You can also speak to Muriel Gray or Flora Falls about it. Thanks again to everyone who helped donate toys for the toy drive. Uh, Christmas goodie bags. Today is the last day for uh, offering, uh, if you want to give money for that. Um, and the bags will be packed on the 14th of December at one o'clock in the upstairs hall. And I'm sure if you want to contact Muriel, she would still be happy to receive more helpers with that. I don't think I've missed anything, have I? Our closing hymn is hymn 644, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised, hymn 644.
Our worship in this place is over. Our worship in the wider world begins again. Go in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and evermore. Thank you.